For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. Lowe's has recently made headlines by revising its annual projections for both sales and profit, a move that reflects the challenges currently facing the retail sector. The company has cited a significant downturn in consumer spending on do-it-yourself projects as the primary reason for this adjustment. Furthermore, the company now anticipates total sales to range between $82.7 billion and $83.2 billion, a decrease from its previous estimate of $84 billion to $85 billion. This downward adjustment in outlook is particularly noteworthy as it follows a similar trend observed in its competitor Home Depot, which also lowered its guidance just a week prior. In a different sector, a significant development has emerged in the media industry, where Edgar Bronfman, a prominent media executive, has reportedly submitted a formal bid of $4.3 billion for the controlling shareholder of Paramount Global. This bid comes on the heels of Skydance Media's recent agreement concerning Sherry Redstone's media empire, highlighting the competitive nature of the media landscape. According to a report from the Wall Street Journal, Bronfman's offer is comparable in price to that of Skydance, but it has a key distinction. It does not involve stock dilution for Paramount shareholders, apart from a $400 million breakup fee. To facilitate this ambitious bid, Bronfman has secured financing from high net worth individuals and family offices, and he is collaborating with noted film producer Stephen Paul. Meanwhile, in the airline industry, Hawaiian Airlines' parent company, Hawaiian Holdings, has seen a remarkable 11% increase in its share price during pre-market trading. This surge follows the U.S. Department of Justice's decision to clear Alaska Air Group's $1.9 billion acquisition of Hawaiian Airlines. Although this is a positive development for both airlines, the merger still requires approval from the U.S. Transportation Department before it can be finalized. Earlier this year, the DOJ had requested additional information to assess potential antitrust implications, leading to multiple extensions of the deal's deadline. This merger, if successful, could reshape the competitive landscape of the airline industry, potentially benefiting consumers through increased operational efficiencies and expanded service offerings. Shifting gears to the aerospace sector, Boeing has encountered yet another setback with its 777X jetliner, as reports indicate the discovery of structural cracks during initial test flights. This troubling news, reported by the trade publication, has prompted Boeing to ground its 777X test fleet following the identification of a critical failure in a key engine mounting structure. As a result, Boeing's shares have dropped by 1% in pre-market trading, adding to a challenging year for the company, which has seen its stock price decline over 30% amid a series of setbacks. These challenges include a previous incident where a door plug detached during an Alaska Airlines flight. The cumulative effect of these issues raises concerns about Boeing's ability to regain its footing in a highly competitive industry. In a more positive light, the European Union has recently made a significant move by reducing tariffs on Tesla's electric vehicles manufactured in China and imported into the region. The European Commission announced that the tariffs on these vehicles would be lowered from a provisional rate of 20.8% to a more favorable 9%. This decision comes in the wake of the EU's earlier announcement in June, which provisionally imposed tariffs of up to 38.1% on imported Chinese electric vehicles, citing concerns over unfair subsidies that threaten domestic producers. The timing of this decision is particularly interesting as it follows a few months after U.S. President Joe Biden increased tariffs on Chinese electric vehicle imports to 100% from 25%, aiming to protect American workers from what he described as China's unfair trade practices. As a result of the EU's tariff reduction, Tesla's shares have seen a slight increase of 1% in pre-market trading, reflecting investor optimism about the company's prospects in the European market. On the healthcare front, Medtronic stock has experienced a 1% decline in pre-market trading, despite the medical device maker raising its guidance for fiscal 2025 regarding organic revenue growth and profit per share. This update follows Medtronic's announcement of a 5.3% year-over-year increase in worldwide revenue for the first fiscal quarter, totaling $7.92 billion on an organic basis. The company's cardiovascular portfolio, which is its largest revenue generator, saw a robust growth of 6.9%, while its diabetes portfolio experienced an impressive organic revenue growth of 11.8%. This positive performance underscores Medtronic's strong position in the medical device market, even as its stock faces some short-term pressures. 
In the beauty industry, Cody, a well-known beauty products retailer, is poised to capture investor attention as it prepares to report its fourth quarter 2024 results after the market closes. Analysts are anticipating that the company will report earnings of four cents per share on revenues of $1.38 billion. In its previous quarter, Cody managed to exceed revenue estimates driven by strong demand for its prestige brands and core beauty products. CEO Tsunabi has highlighted the presence of a strong and dynamic beauty market, and the company now expects its full year 2024 revenue growth to be at the high end of its prior guidance range. This positive outlook could bode well for Cody's stock performance as investors await the upcoming earnings report. Meanwhile, Eli Lilly has seen its stock rise approximately 1.5% in pre-market trading following the release of a positive update regarding a clinical trial. The results were promising, showing that the treatment reduced the risk of developing type 2 diabetes by an impressive 94% in obese adults with pre-diabetes. Lilly currently markets terzepatide under the brand names Munjaro and Zetbound for diabetes and weight loss, respectively, and this positive trial outcome could further bolster the company's position in the competitive pharmaceutical market. Turning to the investment landscape, Kathy Wood, the renowned fund manager and head of ARK Invest, has faced a challenging year in the financial markets. Wood has built a reputation as a bold risk taker, attracting a dedicated following as well as some critics along the way. Her investment philosophy often involves making ambitious predictions, such as her $2.3 million price target for Bitcoin, which has garnered both admiration and skepticism. However, her flagship fund, the ARK Invest Innovation ETF, has struggled to keep pace with market trends this year, missing out on the artificial intelligence boom and and declining by approximately 19%, while the NASDAQ composite has risen by over 13%. Despite these recent setbacks, it is important to remember that Wood's previous performance in 2021 was remarkable, and her investment in Tesla may still yield positive results in the future. Recently, as the market experienced a downturn from its recent highs, Wood seized the opportunity to make strategic investments in several stocks. Notably, she purchased over $1 million worth of Amazon shares across five of her funds during the week of August 11th. This acquisition was made at a price approximately 10% lower than what the shares were trading for the prior week, which many analysts view as a favorable discount. Wood's confidence in Amazon as an investment is well-founded. The company has positioned itself to capitalize on the burgeoning AI revolution while simultaneously strengthening its core e-commerce business. Although Amazon reported relatively modest revenue growth of 10% year over year for the second quarter, its earnings per share growth was impressive, nearly doubling compared to the previous year. In addition to Amazon, Wood also invested more than $1.5 million in Tempest AI for two of her funds, capitalizing on a more than 15% discount from the stock's peak at the end of July. Tempest is an intriguing company that utilizes AI to develop precision medicine solutions tailored to individual patients in a field such as oncology, cardiology, and mental health. If Tempest can successfully scale its technology, it could represent a significant advancement in treating these complex diseases. Although the company has yet to turn a profit, it generated over $530 million in revenue last year, indicating strong market demand for its innovative solutions. Another company that has caught Wood's attention is Natera, a genetic testing firm specializing in non-invasive solutions. Unlike her other investments, Natera's stock has not come at a discount. Instead, it has steadily increased in value as the company continues to report solid financial performance. While Natera is still operating at a loss, it has been making significant strides toward profitability, with its latest earnings report exceeding EPS estimates by more than 50%. However, potential investors should exercise caution as Natera is currently facing a class action lawsuit alleging unfair and deceptive billing practices. This is not the first time the company has encountered legal challenges. It previously settled a lawsuit in 2018 with the Department of Justice for $11 million related to fraud allegations. While legal issues are common in the business world, prospective investors may want to consider these risks before committing their capital. In the tech sector, Apple is making headlines with its plans to produce its iPhone Pro and Pro Max models in India for the first time, as reported by Bloomberg News. This strategic move is being executed in partnership with Foxconn Technology, Apple's primary manufacturing partner, which is set to assemble the new phones shortly after their global launch this fall. This production initiative is part of Apple's broader strategy to reduce 
reduce its dependence on China amid rising geopolitical tensions and supply chain challenges. In the fiscal year ending March 2024, Apple produced approximately $14 billion worth of iPhones in India, accounting for nearly 14% of its total production. This shift not only highlights Apple's commitment to diversifying its manufacturing base, but also positions the company to better serve local markets. The local assembly of iPhones in India is expected to have a positive impact on pricing, potentially reducing the cost of the Pro models by up to 10% compared to imported devices, which are subject to import duties. However, it is important to note that the costs of expensive component imports and domestic taxes may still keep the prices of the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max higher in India compared to some foreign markets with lower taxation. Interestingly, the bulk of the India-made Pro and Pro Max models are expected expected to be exported to Europe, the Middle East, and the US, as demand for these higher priced versions is relatively lower in the Indian market. Nevertheless, the upcoming holiday season could present an opportunity for increased sales in India, as consumer interest in premium devices typically rises during this time. Apple continues to navigate a competitive landscape, facing stiff competition from local brands such as Huawei Technologies, which have gained significant market share. According to data from research firm Canalys, Apple ranked 6th in China with a market share of 14%, down 2 percentage points compared to the second quarter of 2023. This shift underscores the importance of Apple's efforts to diversify its manufacturing and sales strategies as it adapts to changing market dynamics. Overall, the developments across various sectors, from retail and media to aviation, healthcare, and technology, illustrate the complex and interconnected nature of today's economy. Each company is navigating its unique challenges and opportunities, and investors are closely monitoring these shifts as they seek to make informed decisions in an ever-evolving market landscape. As we continue to witness these changes unfold, it'll be interesting to see how companies adapt and thrive in the face of adversity and competition. For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.